Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and begin. Again, thanks everyone for coming. Um, my name is Brad Burwald. I've been a sales engineer with Morningstar for a little over 10 years now. So I'm definitely pleased to talk about the third generation SunSaver. Um, to many of you, this doesn't seem as much of a new product because you've probably already been selling them quite a bit. Uh, we have had them on the market. What we did is uh, we did a bit of a phased deployment of this product because it is such a high volume product and one that's critically important to a lot of industries. We started introducing some of the versions actually at the end of last year and then we rolled out the rest of them uh, just a couple months ago uh, because of you know distribution and inventory delays you know it takes a little bit of time but the product is fully here and we're at full production and delivering them uh, quite well so uh, now what we're doing is just getting a, a little bit of a marketing push to get everyone familiar with the product its new features and answer any questions all right so I will go ahead and get started again as I said earlier if you would like to ask a question, go ahead and submit that in the box there, and Russell and I will do our best to answer those. And uh, we'd like to do that at the end so that, you know, everyone can get a time to, to put the question in, and then I can answer it verbally for you. Okay? We think that the total presentation will be about 20 or 30 minutes. So we'll get started. Uh, there's the Generation 3. I'll show you a little bit of the differences, but mainly the biggest difference in the look of the product is the change in the way the LEDs are on the screen. Okay, uh, the Generation 3 is, of course, the same size, has the same uh, mounting locations, has the same amp and voltage ratings, has the same battery selection choice. Uh, we have the same terminal design and, most importantly, the same competitive price. So in a lot of ways, in the areas that matter for distribution and a lot of customers that have put this product into use for many years, you're not going to see anything dramatically different in the way it's installed, the mounting plates anything that's really going to mess up any existing designs. Uh, what we did change a lot is some of the internal components, the features, the functions, the certifications, uh, the circuitry. So we're hoping that it won't disrupt anyone's business, but it'll add a lot of new features that you'll uh, actually be able to put to use. Okay, so, and the most important thing, as I mentioned at the last part there, is the price. Uh, all seven models have been revised and have the new features. And we were waiting till we could get to a time with the technology where we were able to add a lot of these new benefits without interrupting the price. Since this product is generally in the, uh, the lower end of the, the power range, it's really cost sensitive because we see uh, we have well over a million units deployed into the field of just the sun savers. So we really wanted to make sure that it was going to keep its existing market position. And to do that, we felt that the price needed to remain unchanged. Okay, so. Hopefully that's some good news. Uh, what I'll do is let me review the new features here briefly, and then uh, what I will do is I'll go over them in detail uh, on the following slide so that you can see what exactly it is we're talking about with each of these new features. All right. Uh, first, this controller has full electronic protections from faults. Uh, we added a four-stage battery charger. Okay, so it's now more equivalent to some of the higher end products and you have four charging stages. Uh, that's all microprocessor controlled. Uh, we have a self-diagnostic built into the controller so it's able to determine in a lot of ways if there's any problems with the controller or even any hardware failures and alert the user. Uh, we've got three LEDs to indicate battery state of charge level. Good old uh, green, yellow, and red as you're familiar with on many of our other products. So that's now a feature on all the sun savers. Uh, we've added something called dead battery recovery. That allows a battery that has been completely discharged. I mean, this is a flatlined battery that's sitting at 2 volts and can't power anything. If you have a battery that's in that state, the SunSaver is able to provide charge and recover. As long as it's able to be recharged, it can recharge a battery from that low voltage. Okay, so that's a new feature. And that's something we implemented in the SunSaver Duo and the SunKeeper and now has been brought into the SunSaver family. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, we have a telecom mode for sensitive loads. If anyone is concerned about any kind of noise or a very sensitive load, it's concerned about PWM interference, we have a telecom mode now available on this product. Uh, we have a 15 volt max charge limit so that we don't charge higher than 15 volts for sensitive loads. And uh, most importantly, we have a full UL 1741 certification on all of these products. You know, certifications are really important as the industry's really continued to uh, 
mature and, and reach new levels. There's a lot of scrutiny on you know, safety, even at the 12-volt level. So we really felt it was important to have a full UL listing on this product. Okay, so we've uh, brought that as well. And with um, the electronic protections, these are all the, the the fault or air conditions with wiring that the controller is protected from. So that will be solar or load overload, uh, solar or load short circuit protection. Uh, there's no fuses. This is all electronic. So if you get any of these fault conditions, the controller will go into a fault mode until it's reset. Um, if the condition is removed beforehand, it will uh, reset automatically. We have a PV reverse polarity, battery reverse polarity. Uh, we have the ability to detect when the temperature sensor has been damaged. We have a high temperature disconnect and also a high voltage disconnect. Um, high temperature disconnect, you know, this product is rated to 60 degrees Celsius, so that is usually not an issue, but it is there in order to protect the MOSFETs from becoming damaged in high temperatures. It would just shut down until it cooled off and then resume temperature. And in the case of high voltage, if the battery is being charged excessively by another charging source, we will disconnect the sun saver to, you know, not also contribute to that overcharging. And again, at the bottom there, I want to remind you, the, the faults are all electronic, so no fuses. Uh, everything will reset automatically when that condition is resolved, okay? Moving on, uh, four-stage battery charging. So just like the ProStar and TriStars and other of our higher-end products, the SunSaver has a four-stage charging uh, implementation. So we have the existing bulk and absorption that the SunSaver Gen 2 had, uh, but we've also added equalization. That's only for a flooded battery. And we do have a true float stage. So during a uh, extended absorption of about two hours afterwards, the control will drop into float. So that's really useful on these controllers, especially small systems, because when you have a pretty small battery and plenty of solar, you know, you probably are going to hit a full battery. And, uh, you know, if you want to go into like a maintenance stage, that's really uh, critical so that the battery lasts a long time. So we've got that float stage in there as well. And, and these extra functions are really only able to be done when you've got a microprocessor uh, in there. And that's what we've added to the SunSaver Gen 3. Okay, so moving on. Self-diagnostics, uh, you know, with these LEDs, we're able to convey quite a bit of information. Um, I talked about the green, yellow, red for the battery state of charge. We also have a charging status LED on there. Uh, it's shown to be green in this photo. It's actually a bicolor LED, so it can be both green or red. So with different indicators there, you can tell when the product is in bulk, absorption, float, equalization. You know, you get different blinking rates there for the green charging LED. And if you have any kind of damage or fault condition, that charging status will turn red. Okay, either a blinking red for a fault, or if you've actually got hardware damage, it will go solid red. So we definitely would have to speak to you uh, uh, from our tech support department there to see what's going on in that case. Uh, the green, yellow, red will indicate your uh, battery charge level, just a rough indicator of how full your battery is. And if you get different fault conditions, you will see different blinking indicators there telling you what's going on in a little more detail. For instance, high temperature is yellow and red alternating to give you an idea that there's uh, too much heat. So that is indicated with those LEDs. So a lot more information available there, even on the little six amp guy. So uh, hopefully that will help you with your system. Dead battery recovery. So, you know, this product is a series PWM controller. Okay, so it's not a shunt control like you used in years past. Since it's a series device, we actually have to have power from the battery in order to run the SunSaver. You know, we've got, there's some memory in there, there's software code, there's a microprocessor. You know, we need a little bit of juice, not more than about 10 milliamps, but it, it has to be consistent. So we're not powered by the solar array, which is going to go up and down with clouds and such. So we need some power from the battery. If the battery is flatlined below about 8 volts, our 12 volt power supply for our own controller can't operate. So that's been, you know, it, there's a lot of advantages given to a product of this level of sophistication, but when you don't have the power there, you just want to get it back up and running. And that was something that the SunSaver Gen 2 was affected by. Uh, below 8 volts, it would have trouble even powering itself. So you'd get a brownout condition. All right. With the new SunSaver Gen 3, we're able to boot the controller up off of the PV array temporarily just to kind of get things going. We call it a bootstrap mode where you just kind of wake up, 
maybe just do some basic charging, nothing fancy, get that battery up. When you get it over 8 volts, then the full power supply is able to kick in, switch back to the battery, and we're able to take over as we normally would. So the key here is it gives you the ability to recover even from a completely dead battery. So hopefully you don't have batteries hitting 2 volts or else you've got something wrong there. You've got bad sizing or you've, uh, you really need LVD at that point to keep that from happening. But the SunSaver can recover from that state, and that's uh, really critical. Okay. Um, power handling for sensitive loads. Uh, another feature that we've added to this is um, a 15 volt. There's there's two features here that really kind of come under this category. You know, the load side of the Sun Saver is directly connected to the battery. Okay, it's it's not a regulated DC power supply. The voltage you'll see on the load side of the Sun Saver is the voltage that the battery is at. Okay, there's just really a switch in there. It's not a, a dedicated DC to DC converter. So we have to be aware of a few situations. Um, one is that a lot of equipment that's meant to run on 12 volts, and I've actually got a, that's a wireless RTU radio pictured there in the photo. A lot of that equipment doesn't like to operate outside of a range about 10 to 15 volts. It may be listed for 12 volts, but often that means it's meant to run on a 12 volt power supply. That's not the same as being on a battery that's cycling up and down with the solar system. Okay, so a lot of people miss that, and a lot of equipment manufacturers will say it's a 12 volt device, but they don't really necessarily think of a solar system all the time when they talk about that. They may think of a wall wart transformer powering it. Okay, so for this reason, we've seen issues where if the, the voltage actually rises over 15 volts, um, and that can happen when you've got extreme cold. The temperature compensation that's correct for a lead acid battery is going to take it up into the 15 volt territory. Some loads do not like that. So what we've done is we've implemented a software ceiling there where we will temp comp, but when you hit really cold temps, it's going to halt the temp comp and it's not going to charge any higher than 15 volts. Okay, we implemented that in the software. Definitely will prevent a lot of problems with loads that could be affected by this. They could reset, even could be prone to damage. So to protect that, we've got that 15 volt charge limit. All right. And another thing we've implemented is the telecom mode. Uh, we offer on the ProStar and the TriStar, and now the SunSaver Gen 3, a way to disable the PWM charge regulation. Okay, PWM is really going to do the best job charging a battery, I mean, other than PPT, of course, but we're in a different product category here. With PWM, we really want to uh, minimize noise, and we've done that. We've used a 300 hertz very low frequency pulse width modulation cycle. Uh, it should be well below any kind of telecommunications equipment, but you know there's things that happen in systems. Improper grounding, you get noise, you get harmonics that can reach into the higher frequencies, and you never know when you're going to have some problems. So what we do is for the rare case where you do have interference from PWM, we give you a backup option. If you've already got the system installed, you know you've got your helicopter guy there standing by, and you're on a mountaintop, and you've got noise. We give you a jumper underneath the cover plate of the Sun Saver, and you can cut that jumper, and that will allow you to disable the PWM as a failsafe if you have any trouble. Okay, this is really not much of an issue, but it just gives people some extra peace of mind when they're doing the installations. Okay, so that PWM telecom mode jumper is under the cover plate there. We didn't want to make it a switch; it's really not necessary because it's just not used that often. But it is available under the cover there as a backup. When you cut that and you put it into telecom mode, we will go to a very low frequency on-off type switching. Not as good for the battery, but it'll get the job done. It's still a four-stage charger, and it may fix a lot of those problems. Okay. So uh, one of the last features to discuss here is we do have a full UL1741 certification. Okay. So let me talk a little bit about certifications here. For those of you in the oil gas industry, uh, this is a major product for your markets, and it's really a legacy product there. We've been selling into that market for many, many years. And this product, of course, has the existing Class 1 Division 2 hazardous location certification. This means you can put the Sun Saver into a natural gas wellhead site. You can put it close to the pipeline, you know, per the, the requirements for the code for those types of installations. 
And under normal operating conditions, this product doesn't use any relays. There's no arcing that's going to occur during normal operation that could cause an explosion. Okay, so that class one division two rating, it's actually groups A, B, C, and D, if you really want to dig into the details, uh, that will be certified to be used in an environment like that. Okay, and that's pretty important. Okay, so all of the sun savers, all the Gen 2s had that, all of the Gen 3s do as well. Uh, the, there, we actually have a separate document, and if you'd like to get it, please email me after the fact or uh, look on our website. But we have a really specific document that goes over all the codes and all the details. You can show it to your inspector, and he'll be very happy. And uh, we're, of course, very willing to back you up on any discussions with inspectors because uh, Morningstar wants to make a really big push that, you know, we're going to be the quality product. We're going to have the certifications you need for your industry and make sure to back you guys up on this stuff. So be in touch with us there. Uh, so, so getting back to the, the details of the certifications, all of these products have class one division two. Now, if you also would like the product to be fully compliant with UL 1741, which is, is not a hazardous location thing, it's more of an electrical safety certification for solar products, then the included cover plate in every box can be placed on the front of the controller, and you'll see embossed in the plastic there the ETL symbol for the ETL labs, uh, Intertech, you know, did our certification, so it's listed to both UL 1741 as well as CSA for Canada. Okay, so all North America is covered, and you've got a full listing. This is the same listing that the TriStars have, okay? Of course, they have conduit. Uh, at 12 volts, we don't need conduit, but we do have this cover plate there, okay? And some people think it actually uh, looks quite attractive, uh, having a nice cover over the terminals there. So whether it's for certification or looks, we don't care, as long as you guys are happy. Uh, you can just pop that on there, and then you'll see the certification embossed on the front of that cover, all right? So we got the full listing. Uh, and, and I know what you're thinking. No, you cannot put the cover on an old sun saver and get a listing. Uh, we can't go back in time, so don't try that. Anyway, so that's uh, all about the certifications, okay? And as I said, that cover is included in every box. So if you don't need it, you don't need to apply it. If you do, it's available, and we're even going to have some extras at the office. Uh, I think there's also included some, some ETL stickers as well that I think you can put near the controller or on the outside there, okay? So everything you need to know is uh, written on the face of the controller. And, of course, we've got plenty of documentation, and you can look up our our uh, UL listings, you know, Intercheck, of course, can supply that to anyone that's got questions. Okay, so that's the certification. So that pretty much covers all the new features. Um, you know, this is the latest version of our product. Uh, this is more of a generational upgrade to this product just to keep it current. New certifications using the latest technology, uh, you know, very low power microprocessor in there. We're definitely working on some bigger and better products. There will be brand new releases coming uh, along shortly, but you know we do need to keep our products uh, relevant for the market, and that's what we've done with the SunSaver. We just wanted to do it uh, very carefully and uh, make sure that existing customers who have been using this product for many, many years continue to be happy as well as reach into some hopefully new markets. Um, the SunSaver is one of was one of our first products. It was the second one released right after the first ProStar in 1997, and this product is used in marine applications, oil and gas, plenty of RVs, all sorts of industrial applications. Pretty much everything uh, that off-grid is involved in, the SunSaver has uh, participated in. I want to let you know Morningstar will be at Solar Power International 2012 uh, in just a couple weeks in Orlando, Florida. So if anyone happens to be at that show, please come by and say hello to us. We can talk about this product as well as many others. And that pretty much... Uh, concludes the presentation. So what I'll do